Welcome to the Peace of Me podcast. This is your space for all things peace, positivity, and finding balance to live your best life. Life gets busy and at times it's messy. I'm here to help you clean things up and put peace back in its place. I'll share tips, ideas, interviews, mindset shifts, and fresh perspectives to help you along the way. If you missed your chance to win a coffee on me during Free Coffee Fridays, well, you're in luck. I still have a discount code for you. The Peace of Me podcast partnered with Java Sock to give a handful of listeners an iced coffee Java Sock and a free cup on me. I drink iced coffee year-round and just rotate the coffee creamer flavors to keep it festive and fun. If you didn't win the contest, you can still score a 10% off discount by using my code LEXI82172. I'll put this code in the show notes of this episode below so you too can keep your cup cozy through the season. Hi friends, it's Lexi Lee. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new, then welcome back and thanks so much for coming back to the podcast. Last week, House Hunters International TV star Amanda joined me on the Peace Me podcast to talk about how she is living her best life. Now, last week, I shared part one of our conversation. So if you missed last week's episode, you'll want to go back and listen to that part first. Today, you'll hear part two. Amanda has built a business to help both men and women with their self-esteem. She's quite busy with it too, and at times has a waiting list. She was kind enough to offer the Peace of Me podcast listeners a discount code for 25% off her services. I'll list the discount code in the show notes below so you can link up with Amanda to take advantage of this incredible offer and get further support. Now, you might recall from last week's episode that Amanda is from Canada, but moved to Mexico to create the life she dreamed of. In today's episode, she'll share how she made this move happen from the legal steps she took to hiring the right movers. She also shares the trauma of her childhood, including her speech impediment and always being picked last. She opens up about the exact moment she realized suicide wasn't the answer. Listener discretion is advised. But she also talks about how the locals treat her and if she's had any regrets and what living her best life looks like and how to break through your comfort zone. So let's take a listen. You know, saying just do it, I'm with you. How how do they do it, though? Like, how do they take those steps and do what you did and say, move to another country or start over? How do they do that? You have to find an expert who knows the legal stuff because the last thing you want to do is just think that you can go on a tourist visa because you're given six months. Oh, I can go for six months. That's the easy way, right? But Mexico is getting very strict because millions not thousands, millions of people are moving to Mexico in droves, in droves. Uh, Mexico is so busy right now and the peso is so high because as of January, Mexico will be 100% independent of the world. Right now they import uh, 40% oil and gas. Right now they uh, manufacture 60%. They have been building the biggest pipeline and the biggest refinery ever. And they will be completely independent. And Mexico is this underrated country. They're just, they kind of stay south. They do their own thing. They don't get involved in all this world politics. And they're underestimated. But they are brilliant. You know, and then um, the one thing that really upset Mexico was during COVID. Those computer chips for cars. Yes. They... So they manufacture tons of cars, but they were relying on China. And all of a sudden, one of the few things that they rely, they said, that's it, enough of this. So what do they do? They built the massive computer chip factory. And what does it do? Creates thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs. So now they're like, forget that. So Mexico also is a doer country. Like they don't, we're not going to rely on anybody. We need to make sure that we look after our 
people. So people, you have to research the income. Um, and sadly, every year, M Mexico is raising it. So they want to make sure that uh, um, you're not going to take away a job from a Mexican. You either have to have, you can apply for your permanent or your temporary and there's different financial um, pros and cons for both so the first thing I did was I did research and I found um, a consultant and she was amazing because I thought I'm the type of, of person if I'm going to do it I'm going to do it right and if I have to pay even if I have to pay more this is such a big thing and I value people's um, skills so, you know, somebody said, oh, I must be nice. All you have to do is talk and you get paid f for it. I'm like, well, you know, I mean, okay, a mechanic doesn't talk about what's in his head, but our skills are in our head, right? So um, this cons consultant, she was amazing and she told me what I needed and in Canada and I think, and the same with the States, you have to start in your own country. You don't go to Mexico and say, hi, I, I'd like to move in. No, no, no. You have to start from your own country. And uh, that's what I did. Got my papers done, got my appointment, went down. Actually, I was in Mexico. I had to fly out of Mexico, come to Calgary, Alberta, got my appointment. She booked it uh, for me. And then I was, I was welcomed within f five, five minutes. I almost started to cry. He was the nicest, beautiful human. And, um, yeah. And he said, bien venidos Amanda means welcome Amanda. And I was just like, I was just like, are you kidding? Like, this is really going to happen? And he said, yes, yes. Because one thing he said that I love that you said that you love my people. That was, it wasn't just the weather. It was you, you, you recognize my people. And I said, I want to be more. Yes. I said, I want to be around your people. They're so positive. They live in the moment. You know, it's just so inspiring. So that's the first thing you need to make sure that you can um, stay in the country and live there, or you need to find a company to sponsor you. Hmm. No, those are really good tips. And I love that he said that. I mean, I, I think I would have been so emotional too, because that's mm -hmm. what you were working towards. And it was like, now it's becoming a reality that the, the dream is becoming a reality that had to be so mm -hmm. exciting. I love that. And then you have to find a mover. A lot of people either, I learned a lot, I did a lot of research. So many people sell everything. They sell everything and they go down with two, two bags. But then I heard from those people that they wish that they slowed down and they wish that they brought more stuff. And then you have the other people where I can't live without it. It's all going to come with me. So I, I knew that my balance was... I need to bring what what brings me joy. So my grandparents on both sides of my family were beautiful, beautiful hu humans. And I have their and, and teaks. And I, 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 I just said, I don't care. These are priceless. These need to come with me. So I asked my immigration consultant, which a moving company she would recommend. She gave me one from Mexico that is c connected to the movers up here. And it was seamless. It was absolutely seamless. It was so beautiful. That was a huge moment, actually. It was one thing that I had arrived in Mexico and I had my, um, I had my visa. But when those doors of the moving truck opened and I saw my furniture, oh, I'm getting goosebumps right now. I was like, I really am here. Like that's my grandmother, great, great grandmother's antique chair with the needle point is right. I'm looking at it. You know, I've been looking at that chair since I was a little girl and it's here now with me. And I almost wanted to like cry and, and they're like, senorita, 
donde donde and like where and i'm like uh ah, right um okay that goes over here <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but to your point, though, I mean, for for something that meant so much to you and traveled all these miles, arrives in one piece, and then now mm-hmm. is part of like the next chapter of your life. That has to be yeah. emotional. Yes, I actually filmed when the moving truck. When I oh, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that moment. I was in a, my empty living room. You know how your house gets that echo when there's nothing in it. And my, I was walking in and it was the last moment, you know, when you know that you're leaving this house for like for your last yeah. time. And the I lived in that house for 17 years. I never thought I was going to move. I had a house that I loved, loved, like people loved, loved. I also had 14 big trees. Mm. It was beautiful, beautiful home. And I was like, I can't believe I'm leaving you. I said, I'm so sorry. I'm leaving you. And I said, I have to go. I don't know why I'm going to get emotional because it was, that was the hard because when the moving truck started to move and drive away, mm-hmm. I filmed it. And I was like, uh, asked him, asked him later, like, I guess I'll see you. And to think of the trip that that furniture had to go through yeah. to get all the way to me and then to be in Mexico and then the moving truck opened, I was like, Wow. I really cool. did this. Mm-hmm. It was so cool. But I was very happy that uh, I brought my stuff. But also, I'm not a I'm not a person that hoards a lot of stuff. So I constantly because I moved between kindergarten and grade twelve. I went to ten different schools. So we were constantly moving, and I we just I hate moving. I don't I don't, I don't know anybody who loves it. But anyways. I always cleanse, cleanse, mm. cleanse, cleanse, cleanse constantly. I'm always purging, purging, purging. Cause we really realize we don't realize how much stuff we can live without mm-hmm. until we see it because we have so much stuff and we go, Oh wow. I remember this, but 13 seconds ago, you, you hadn't even thought about that thing for over a year. Good point. Right? <laughs> yeah. So to cleanse myself of this stuff I felt so light and airy um I I didn't need it you know and that feels very very special just to have the stuff that I really love with me but also get rid of so much stuff and then I think that keeps people from moving they're like oh we have so much stuff yeah I had to go have it was the craziest I came up I had four weeks to pack my house I had two week long workshops that could I clients that I opened my mouth and said I was coming to Canada I had to pack my house and have a garage sale I had two weeks to pack a house that I had lived in for 17 years and sort and that's a different sort there is there is sell there's Mexico then I had to keep stuff for my bi- business that I I I store at the airport and then I had donate then I had family then I had friends and it was a different than just at least when you move it all goes to the same spot but this different sorting stuff but it was all worth it I was exhausted I mean they say that once you do that move you're done you're a vegetable for like a week I was <laughs> I can see why there's just so much that goes into it. But I, when you said the purging part too, I like I can completely empathize with that because there's just something so cleansing about just getting rid of stuff that we hold on to that to your point, whether you remember it, you know, and you haven't thought about it in a while or just stuff you don't use. I mean, gosh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff already lying around and it just takes up space. So right. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah, I scanned all my fam because I I inherited my grandmother's photo albums that mm. I was like, this is so much weight. I'd, I, 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 I barely, I, I barely go through these. So there, there's an app that you can take a picture of your, of the, all the pictures on that screen and it'll scan it. And then you can print di- digital photo albums and then send to your family and friends. You love know, that. there's I always, love that. yeah, it was wonderful that, that, I mean, that was hard, you know, but life yeah. is not easy. If it is hard, it means you are a living. Mm-hmm. 
I agree. And you mentioned a little bit too about your your business and about public speaking and, and really helping women with their self-confidence. Could you just tell us a little bit about kind of what you do and, and how you help women with that? Yeah, so the name of my newest textbook is How to Love Yourself As Is, and I own the trademark to I Am Beautiful Because. Um, so you can't buy my textbook. You have to take my mastery program online. Um, that's the only way you're going to get, get it because my integrity level is so high that I, it's kind of like a, a YouTube video, you know, sometimes you get a book or something and then when you read it and then you scan the, the QR code and there's a video, oh, that's what they they mean, oh, I'm supposed to put this in there. So <clears throat> my textbook is, I care so much because I know, um, you know, there's so many people who are hurting and a lot of us are hurting and we don't even admit that we're hurting. And um, I felt like I was the human mistake. So I was raised to a mother that was not ready to be a mother. She was, she had me too young. Um, I won't go into a lot, but I, I really felt like a human screw up. I, I felt like I was the human mistake. Um, and I did the best that I could. And I can see that my mom did the best that she could, but, um, everything was surface. Everything had to look nice. Um, she had, a, she was like str struggle going to the corner store unless she looks perfect. So, um, I had horrible teeth. Um, I stuttered, um, so badly. I know what it feels like to be so skinny that everybody makes fun of you that, that you're so skinny. I mean, we're in such a world here. You either got to lose weight or eat more, or we're not taught just to, you know, love yourself as is. So with, um, so using a methods that I developed. Um, I went from the geek to the captain of the cheer squad. That was my goal. Um, at the time, um, using methods, self-esteem methods, uh, and because I was going to end, end my life when I was 12 years old, I truly believe that if I ended my life, I'd be doing the world a favor, like the biggest favor. So I was, so when I figured out that to make the pain stop, if I ended my life, I was like, right. Like I was so excited because I was so excited for others for my mother, she wouldn't, cause I was so, I always heard that I was so expensive. Um, and like I was always picked last and bullied and made fun of, you know, we all have a story. Um, and I hated, I hated myself. Like I had freckles. I still have freckles even more now that I live in Mexico, but I used to hate my freckles so much. And then like, and then, you know, I was, I, I'm on a mission. If you're a teacher, if you're a coach, if you have a group of people and you need to find teams, we have got to stop doing this. Okay. You and you are the uh, leaders. Now pick. There's a reason why they do that in reality television to show the pecking order. It's horrific. It's horrific. It can be fixed so easily easily you just go one two one two one two one two one two one's here two's here done but why are we doing this and I was always the kid that was picked last and when you're standing there and all these humans are on the other side and it's you and this other girl and I she was always usually second and then I was always last when you start walking over to the side that you're put to, they don't open their arms and go, ah, oh, come on, Amanda. You know, their eyes are uh, rolling and do, do, do. Oh, great. Now we get stuttering for a freak geek, you know? So, and then at home, my mother never told me she loved me. She never touched me. She never hugged me. Um, she, the words that she would say to me were, awful. So 
um, when I went to end up of my life, I was so excited. I was just trying to think of a way to not leave a big mess. So, <clears throat> um, this is my own personal, personal story, but I never believed in a God. Um, that's how I was raised. And at the moment that I was, I figured out how I was going to end my life. My shoulder got very, very warm. I felt fingertips. And in the back of my head, I heard clear as day. I heard these this most calm, masculine voice, just say, Amanda, patience. And I remember snapping my head around, looking, and there's nobody there. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, now I am hearing things. I'm feeling things. Like I am, oh my God. Like I really thought I was going psychotic. I thought, holy cow, like I'm psycho. Like I'm going, I'm going to be one of those psycho people. And five minutes later, I started to think, how I no, I knew how I was going to end my life, but when, and this time I felt fingertips pressing on my right shoulder and this light shot across my hip and right outside of my left hip. And it took my breath away. And I just went <clears throat> like this and I had felt loved. I had never in my human existence felt loved in my life. And I always felt like a bother. And then I heard Amanda, please, I have so many plans for you. And I just started screaming all this anger. Who is this? Casper, the mighty ghost. I'm like, why do you even have me down here? The, the, the story for a free geek. I'm like, why do you even have me here? And there was no answer. And I'm like, oh, sure. Now you got no answer. Oh, now you got nothing to say. And for some reason, I, I went, fine, I'll stay. But I'm doing it my way. To this day, what is my way? I don't know what a my way was. But for the first time in my life, I realized that every single human being on this planet, you are born for a reason. There's a reason why you were born. You're not a mistake. And two months later, I was still feeling the same, same awfulness. And I decided I'm going to fight back. And I had these ideas given to me. I saw a bucket is a bucket and I kept seeing this bucket I'm like what what is this bucket and it was driving me crazy and then I learned the self-esteem bucket and then I learned I saw this teeter totter and he gave me these ideas and I because I'm visual and I develop self-esteem ideas and lessons and I pushed myself and I became the captain of the cheer squad and then after high school um was really awful. I, it was awful. I, 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 uh, was, I was brutally raped. Um, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do for school. Um, and I gave up and I regressed back to when I was 12 years old and, um, and uh, I felt this like, a nudge keep going you are here for a reason so I started using the methods that I helped myself um, from when I was 12 all over again and I my mother did a local modeling so she was great that way in, in regards to walking and posture and all that stuff and I was teaching a modeling at an agency in Edmonton and I always wanted to be a teacher, but I didn't want to teach math, science, socials, art, sports. I'm like, well, what what's left? Spelling? Right, I right. mean, <laughs> that's all there was to teach. And I remember um, I had this idea, teach self-esteem and modeling. I thought, that is ridiculous. What does that have to do with one another? And... I, and then I got it. If I can make somebody feel beautiful on the inside and the outside, because I was working with these beautiful faces, these beautiful people, and they were miserable. They would complain about their ears were sticking too far from their head. Their eyes were this. And I'm like, do you see yourself? You're being paid for what you look like. And I, to me, it blew my mind. I'm like, how can they think they're ugly? They're getting paid for their looks. And that was when I thought, if I could make you feel beautiful like I have myself, then I could teach 
you how to do that. And I said this to a, a school teacher and she said, I think that's brilliant. Let's do it. So I taught my first class in this school in a junior high in 1999. And oh my gosh, it just took off. And then I teach, and then I asked, I was asked to go to an Aboriginal First Nations a reserve. And that took off and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And I just keep um, mastering my skill and I pass on my skills to my students. I have clients all over the world that I do private sessions with online. And um, because I'm so limited in time now, because my quality of life is very important to me, I'm up here for nine weeks and I'm booked for work for seven so wow. and that's it and other clients want me and I'm like I'm sorry no when I come back or online because I'm living my best life mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that and then I'll you know first of all thank you so much for sharing what you did and for opening up because I'm sure that it, a lot of people are resonating with so much of what you're saying and especially the fact that you have nine weeks of work seven of them are fully booked I mean, doesn't that just tell you how much people need to feel like how much self growth and how much self love they need to, to feel, you know, that they need that support. So I think it's amazing that you're working them through that. So thank you for thank what you're you. doing. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Now and it's adults too. It's not just youth because I did start with youth, but I do women, women, men, elders, women, mothers, and daughters and men you would not believe how much our men are are hurting it almost brings me to tears i've helped so many men because mm-hmm. men are taught to suck it up buttercup yeah yep, we have right. to be we have to be gentle with our men and teach men it's okay to be emotionally gentle yeah no i love that you said that yeah and now just to because i know that time is is important and it's we've You've been so kind to give me a, a chunk of your day today to talk. It's on the my podcast. pleasure. <laughs> oh, thank you. So I guess in closing, I really just had um, maybe I guess just a couple questions here, but we've talked a lot about, you know, you've kind of phrased the whole living your best life and kind of what that looks like. But I guess to summarize, what does living your best life look like for you? Like, do you mean like right now or in general? Because I guess I'm doing both. Um, it takes it takes effort. I will admit that there are times when I go, did I make the right choice? And I have been told that that is natural. Because there are days when I miss my family and I miss my friends so much. And I'm like, what the heck am I doing all the way down here? Like I can't, what did I do? And I, I've had one day where I was like my best friend, he, he wasn't well. And I was so angry and it's not very often do I get angry, but I was so angry that I was busy. I was, and, and I just couldn't get in the car and drive over there. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I had felt like, Oh, you know what I mean? Um, but I just, I always say every day and notice five things that you love and like about yourself. And that those are the moments where you have to ask, I had to remind myself, I moved down here because of this and this and this. And, it's, and instead of driving over to his house, I knew I couldn't do it. I went for a walk. I went to the um, store. I bought a fresh or organic banana. I ate this banana underneath this beautiful eucalyptus tree and looked over. And there was a Mexican family having a birthday uh, with a piñata. And the smiles. I And just to see them. And I thought, I can't be with my family right now, but these people and this culture is my, is my new family. And not that time, but another time 
we were, and my girlfriend and I were walking in the same spot and there was another family having a birthday party with a Kenyatta. And we were just taken away by the joy, like the smiles, they're just, they, they like, they live in the, the moment and we were watching them and all of a sudden the, the mother is walking our way and I'm thinking, what, what is going on? And she goes, two, two means you, two, 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 go on day. And she points back and I'm like, okay, like what? And cause I, I'm learning Spanish. She said it was my turn. So, oh my gosh yeah you know, and I'm like no 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 you know I'm like it's okay because both of us are like no we don't want to interrupt and she's and then this other guy this other man walked by and he speaked walked up and he said no 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 please please come please come come and oh. join us so not to be rude because I know it's it would be rude to say you know no again so we went over there and they tied the blindfold on me and they're spinning me around. And then the whole family, because they sing this ch- chant, this song when they're spinning you. And, uh, oh man. And you're like <laughs> trying to swing and hit this pinata and it's so hard. But then I could tell, cause I, I hit it pretty good. They were being really nice cause they were lowering it. Cause one person has it and, and they lower it up and down, up and down, up and down. And I was whacking that thing and, and then I went to hit it and, and I missed and I spun all the way around like, whoo, like a 360 and, and, and they were clapping for me. Bravo, bravo. Buen, bien, bien. Good, good, good. You know? And then my girlfriend did it too. And she did it and the whole family singing and that, 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 you know? And I was like. I would never experience this. Like you, if you see a family in a park it, it, in North America, they do their own thing. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And that was just that's so true. beautiful. And then they asked us to stay. Have some, have some, you know. So what was Canada, in the pinata? Candies. Oh. There's, there's always candies in there. Candies in there. And it wasn't kids. It was all adults. No yeah. way. Get out. I'm thinking so it's we, a birthday party. And... Uh-huh. Well, that's what we oh. figured. That's what I figured too. So, no, it was um it was a woman's birthday. She looked like in her mid 20s and um you can get custom piñatas and you can get, you know, commercial ones, but there's always a business that makes them there. And when they when it finally breaks, the candies go everywhere. And it was so cool to see these adults crawling on their hands and knees in the dirt and the grass, trying to get as many candies as possible, you know? And I'm like, they, they so live in the moment. Like they're just like kids at heart, you know, like they really are living life. And if anybody has ever been to Mexico and you've, and you've met with them, they are just the most joyful, hospitable, cultural I mean, every culture has their bad and, and, and whatnot. But if you don't hang around with the bad crowd, well then, you know, typically you're safe kind of thing. So, but for me to see those 15 adults crawling around (laughs) their hands and knees, trying to get no, mine, 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 you know what I mean? It was just, yeah, it was very special and that's what they do. I mean, like, like even at the opening of your show, I told you I was walking by and this family inviting me in Mm -hmm. to have supper, you know, or to have that fruit. And then this one, if you show any interest in their culture, they are so honored. They are so taken. They're like, Mm. wow, gracias, gracias. Like the fact that you want to learn about their culture is just exquisite. And they will give you the shirt off of their backs because it's Mm. all about being uh being a servant of god to love and to help one another and another thing Mm. a lot of them have very small freezers why yeah why because they eat fresh food why would you freeze it (laughs) well that makes sense that actually makes sense when you say it that way i know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, a true Mexican family, if they have a freezer, there's, 
ice cream in there, yeah, gelato, ice cream, popsicles, ice, you know, ice cubes, stuff that like, you know, but there's none of this like piles of frozen ch chicken or pizza pops or whatever it is. It's no they, kidding. Yeah, it's pretty special. So there's like so many little life lessons that I'm picking up from your story here of just how they live their life and just a lot of, lot of little uh, good things to take away. I love that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So is there anything else that you'd maybe like to share with us or maybe just how people can find you? Because I have just absolutely enjoyed this conversation and I know that the listeners are going to love it too. So thank you so much. Oh. Is there anything else you want to add? Get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. I can't stress that enough. And if you are nervous, that's a great thing because it means that you care. If you were like, oh, I'm going to move to a different country. Oh, yeah, big deal. And you're not nervous about it. I'd be like, why not? Like, don't you care? Don't you want to make sure that you do it right? Because I used to do self-esteem fashion shows. And they were like, why would you do fashion shows? Because the... Because because the world lives backstage. Most people live backstage where it's comfortable. We, but that curtain, I always say, like I had a 50 foot curtain and I say, this is the wall of life. This is the, um, comfortable max is right here. But when you push yourself through that curtain and you go down the runway, there's fear, there's anxiety, there's a nervousness. But when you come back, you're like, oh, I did it. I did it, you know, and as a human, we love it when we see a ch child say, I did it, ma, I did it, mama, I did it, papa, you know, and we're like, yes, you did. But as adults, we don't give ourselves those I did it moments. Um, just recently, um, where I, I'm with my adopted a mom and dad, um, they're such beautiful p people. They never had kids and I met them through my ex and they adopted me and there's a a man here who is from south korea and he gave us a ride to go to one of the big box stores because my family lives in a small town and i asked not even thinking about it i said would you mind stopping at the drive through at the tim tim Hortons is like the most Canadian coffee thing. I mean, it's just Canadian. I don't know if America has any Tim Hortons. You yes, do? Yes, we do. Oh, we love it. No? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? No. We have I here never. Too. Really? Okay. I never <laughs> knew that. Okay. So I just really wanted an ice cap. I haven't had an ice cap. Um, so I just asked, can you stop at the drive thru? And he said, uh, sure, sure. So I. I can recognize body behavior. He's sitting up, very sitting up, very like um, serious. He rolls the windows down and he's like clearing his throat. And I thought, what is going on here? And then he's looking back at us and we tell him what we want again. And then, and then we said, and wh what do you want? And he's like, uh, and then he just picked ice cap. Anyways, oh my gosh, when we were waiting in line, he's sitting there and all of a sudden he says, I did it. <laughs> and my mom and I are like, did what? I went through a North American drive through My English, I've been practicing my English so much. My dream was to go through a drive through and be able to order in English. But I've been so scared to make a mistake and hold everybody up behind me. I keep driving by or I always go inside. He says, thank you, ladies, for pushing me. Oh, my God. This just happened two oh. days ago. My mom and I are like, you did. It. And it went not. And then, oh, it was just so wonderful. Right. So it's nice to see when people push themselves out of their comfort zone. And for your listeners, we really are stronger than we think we are. We hold ourselves back. If you have been told that you are not good enough, if you have been told that you're weak or stupid or unorganized or whatever, whatever it is, you've got to start 
taking small steps. You'll never make it if you if you always look at the end. I always say, yeah, we got to keep our eye on the prize, but you have to look at, you have to keep your eye on just the first step. If all you can do that day is open that door to that bedroom and look at the boxes and stand there for two minutes, if all you can do is just open it, look, look at the boxes, look it around and shut the door and that's all you can do, then be proud of yourself because you did that, but whereas before you just keep walking by it because you keep thinking of what the result should look like, but the result's never going to happen unless you open the door the next day and hold it open for four minutes and then maybe just walk in that room and touch a box. If that's all you can do is touch the box and walk around, then that's, then that's good. You've done great but lower the expectations of our, of yourself, but start. And if you walk by one day and you didn't even walk in or even open the door, answer yourself, why didn't I open that door? Because I'm fear, I'm fearing failure. I'm feeling like a screw up. I feel like I don't have the energy or whatever you've, because once you own it, you own it. Like you're mm. like, there's a freedom of being honest of like, my last point is if you, we all, just because I teach this self-esteem and how to love yourself as is, doesn't mean I go around every day going la, 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 la. No, that does, that's so not true. I have my days where I wake up and I feel so fat unattractively fat and instead of going oh I can't think like that oh push that thought out of my mind that's the worst thing that you can do instead just look at it and go all right I guess I feel fat I feel fat and just own it and there's a there's a strength in there and then if you can put on a pair of sweats put your hair in a ponytail and own it today's my fat day and when my friends see me sometimes they're oh it's a fat day hey I'm like yeah it's a fat day (laughs) and then we look at it but I let myself feel like that for two days on day three why am I feeling like this oh because I haven't jumped on my rebounder in over a week and a half hmm because I've eaten ice cream four times all week that's the stuff you have to ask yourself and you got to answer yourself what can I do to make myself feel better? I'm still allowed to have ice cream. Tonight, I am going to force myself. And it's going to, and say, it's gonna, I'm going to have to force myself to eat something good, even if I don't I like it. But what's funny is that even when you're eating that food that doesn't, you, you, you don't want psychologically you're proud of yourself that you're eating this cucumber you know what I mean but the next day it's unbelievable that the next day we we have a chance to start all over again because my favorite quote is whatever your past has been you have a spotless future so every day we can try again and in the meantime I know it sounds funny, but literally take the time and smell the bloody roses. Don't just keep walking by them. It takes 20, I've counted, like 15 to 20 seconds to smell a rose, you know, and the joy that it brings you. And even if there's so many flowers, I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. And I walk up and I smell it. It doesn't smell. Oh, man. You know what I mean? But at least... (laughs) At least I took the time to go and smell it. Just take the time. If you have, if you have your eyesight, there's millions of people that would love to have your eyesight. If you have hair, people, oh, my hair is so short. Oh, my hair is so curly. But at least you have hair, you mm-hmm. know. Every morning when I wake up, my left, my left leg is the word thank and my right leg is you. Thank you. Millions of people died last night. As you and I are speaking yeah. Millions of people died in their sleep. They had plans to do things and it's done. 
right? So we never know when it's going to be our last moments. So it's a gift. And so use it wisely and love yourself as is. Even though I'm overweight, I still love myself with this weight. But when I lose more weight, I'll be more proud of myself. There's a difference, right? So yeah, I love my love handles. They are slowly leaving because I'm healthy and I'm ready to. Don't lose weight just to look good. Because mm. that's when, that's just stupid. Because, I mean, that's so s- surface. Lose weight to know of that feeling that, wow, I'm doing the, the work. Mm-hmm. And when hard work always pays off, always does. People who just sit and listen you don't do, well, then you're just going to keep watching. So start being, start a living your own show. Yeah. Don't be a bystander in your own life. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. Amanda, this has been everything I hoped. And then some, I mean, oh, this I'm is so glad. everything that Peace of Me podcast is about. And I loved watching mm. your episode. I think I've watched it two times at least. Um, <laughs> love, really? I just, it's because to what you said earlier, it's so inspiring to see people because you do, you fantasize about what if, what could life look like? You know, what could mm-hmm. I do if I made that choice? And you mm-hmm. see, like you said earlier, people who have never visited a country, take the risk, take the leap or someone like you, Mexico was calling your name and it called it many times. And then you finally said, you know, there's a reason I keep coming back here. So I, I just think that I love things like this. I love the inspiration, um, finding the positivity and I think that the listeners are going to absolutely love this episode. So thank you so much. And is there um, any places that people can follow you or get in contact oh, right. with you if they want to work with you, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Life is a one-way ticket. But if you move to a different country, it's not a one-way ticket. If I don't like it, you can always go back. But at least you try. So on on. Instagram. I just recently got on Instagram. I haven't really been an Insta girl, and and you'll see my dog P- Piper. Everybody loves my dog Piper, but Welliver A W E L L I V is in Victor E R A, and my website is selfesteemexpert.com. There's a hyphen in between the word self esteem. I've just raised my rates, but I'm willing for your listeners. I will give them a t- 25% off. Oh, and I don't do that very often. Oh, thank so, you. Is there a code mm-hmm. or anything that they should use? Lexi. Love it. L-E-X-Y. <laughs> so 25% off code Lexi L-E-X-Y. I will link that down below. Yes. I yes. love it, Amanda. Thank you so very much. You have been just a complete joy and a ray of sunshine. Before you go, I need your help. If you're listening to the show on Apple Podcasts, scroll all the way down and give the Piece of Me podcast a positive rating and review. You can also support the podcast by subscribing to this show on Spotify, Apple, Pandora, or wherever you listen. To stay connected, follow the Piece of Me podcast on Instagram, TikTok, and at the website peaceofmepodcast.com.